Hi guys, welcome in. How has your last week been for you? Busy, frustrating. Okay, okay, well, we'll get into that. Um, so like last week, I'll be asking where you fall on the relationship satisfaction. So how would you rate yourself today? on a scale of one to 10. I would rate myself at 3.5. Probably say a four. Okay, okay. So Anita, you say 3.5 and Michael, you say a four? Yeah. Okay, okay. So, so, so what was frustrating about this past week? We got like into this huge fight because I brought up the fact that Michael isn't being physically and emotionally enough, um, physically and emotionally present enough. I feel like Annie and I are just on our own in this family. This is like him, just like how he abandoned. Okay, so Anita, when you guys get into this fight, and, and you're seeing that he's not present. What's coming up for you? You know, what, what are you thinking in that moment when Michael says, I'm too busy to, to go to Anne's event? Yeah, it was like the same thing I went through as a child with my dad and my dad being a wor workaholic. And now I feel like Michael's being a workaholic. And it just brought back those memories for me. And I feel like Michael is just being like my dad. Anita, I am not like your dad. I mean, please just stop comparing us. We're nothing alike. Okay. Okay, so we've talked about cognitive distortions in the previous sessions based on previous experiences. Um, Anita, in this situation, your default is to talk about your dad and Michael being a workaholic. You make a correlation there. Um, what new strategies have we been discussing that comes up for you? Uh, I guess like that fortune telling or something like that. Um, but it really feels like Michael is acting like my dad. Okay, so, so tell me more about that. So what similarities are there? I don't know. Maybe that he always chooses work over his family. Like my dad did that a lot. God, I mean, come on. Don't you remember when I took the week off from work to spend more time with you and Anne? I mean, God, this is just like you. I feel like this is just another over-exaggeration. Okay, um, Michael, can you, can you, can you at least see, can, can you see where Anita's coming from? I mean, I guess work has been really busy lately and, but I also needed Anita to understand that I'm, I'm doing this for the family and I mean, it's not like I forget about you guys. Well, lately, it has felt that way. So, Anita, do you realistically think that Michael is like your dad, based on what he said? No, I don't think they're the same. So this could go along with cognitive distortions of fortune telling. Um, you are predicting and creating the future outcomes based on previous events. Well, I feel like Michael isn't giving me much 
So I have to create my own future because he's being so unpredictable. So, so is there a way you can replace that fortune telling thought? and replace it with something um, something more realistic? Mm, I guess just telling myself that Michael and my dad aren't the same. And you know, when you're having that thought, I like to be there to reassure you that I'm, to remind you that I'm not like your dad. and. And that I do want to compromise. I, I want to be on the same page as you. I wish you would say that more. Anita, I'm trying to find ways to be successful because, because I am focused on the family, on the future of this family. I mean, it's it's important to create a retirement for us and, and to create a college fund for Anne. I mean, I'm, I'm thinking about these things. The, the sacrifices I'm making, I'm, I'm trying to focus on my business. And God, I feel like you never take credit for, you never give me credit for what I do. I, you never tell me I do a good job. I mean, I had a great month last month, and you didn't even acknowledge the hard work I put in. I mean, God, whatever I try to do is never good enough for you. And honestly, I'm, I, I never, I'm never good enough for anyone. Michael, so Michael, when you when you think like that. That you're never good enough for anyone. What is the cognitive distortion that comes up for you? I mean, I guess I think about the fact that I was never there for my mom when she was sick and that I felt I was useless for her and I'm feeling that now. I feel useless for my family because my business isn't doing well. I'm not there for my daughter's events. And, and more importantly, I'm not there for my wife. But if I'm not gonna be validated, I'm just gonna sit in front of the TV because it's the only place where I feel like I'm not being judged these days. So I'm curious, is there a way you could express how you feel without withdrawing? Michael, what did you need from Anita when you had that great month? I needed validation and I needed the fucking benefit of the doubt. the opportunity and I didn't give you the praise you needed for making it one and I'm so sorry that I missed it and I didn't give you that opportunity to you. that's good yes that's good but what I just heard was another example of one of the previous problems that we've discussed Michael for you when you make an effort to contribute to the family and it's not validated, you withdraw from the family. Your need is that Anita validates your efforts. However, this time, Anita missed that opportunity to validate you. As a result, you felt re-injured and you went back to your default thought that you could not be emotionally and physically there for your family based on not hearing a validation from Anita. I would encourage you to remind yourself of our reframe in these moments. Michael, you need validation from Anita. You need to ask for it when you don't receive it. And, and 
Anita, when when Michael withdraws from you, he went back to his cognitive default, and that you know, when Michael withdrew from you, Anita, you went back to your cognitive default that Michael's just like your father. But in fact, he's not your father. He's Michael doing his best to contribute to the family. So it's important for you to see that Michael isn't your father and that he's making an effort to contribute and he also needs validation for that effort. And I believe, so when you guys are able to recognize these opportunities to reframe your cognitive distortion, you're better able to meet each other's needs. I think it takes a lot of strength to recognize these thoughts. Um, and I just wanna say thank you to the both of you for putting in the work and the time and the effort to recognize the fact that you're having now. You guys are doing a great job. Is there anything else that has happened this past week that you guys want to put on the table or discuss today? <laughs>